All right, guys, uh, so welcome to part nine of our playground modeling and assembly project. And in this video, we're going to take care of the last of our sub assemblies. We're going to be focusing on the platforms and the poles that they need. Now, unlike some of the other sections that you can pretty easily see what you need to do, definitely recommend that you look at the playground assembly, um, <laughs> playground assembly instructions and uh, make sure that you're kind of recognizing which poles need to go in which parts of the platform, um, in particular with the, uh, the triangular uh, platform. So for us to continue, we're going to go ahead and create another document within Onshape. Uh, we're going to call it the platform subassembly. And then within the assembly tab, we know that we're going to go ahead and start inserting some parts. And specifically, they're going to be ones like the main pole. That's going to be a primary uh, piece of the uh, rectangular platform. But we also know that we're going to need to use the long pole for some of the other pieces. Okay. And you got to be careful with these because even though, uh, well, because we're in the three-dimensional file, uh, these could look fairly similar based on perspective. Okay. But the last of the poles that we're going to need, uh, at least for this portion, are going to be the short pole. We'll need a few of those, but we'll copy and paste them as needed. And then finally, we need the platforms themselves. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and grab the main platform. We need to make sure that it's got a version that's up to date. Let it generate those. Okay. So we've got our platform, and then we need to make sure that we are grabbing the triangular platform as well. Okay. So we've got all of the pieces in place. Okay. I'm going to move a couple of them kind of out of the way. And the main pole is going to be the one that I'm going to first fix. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and copy it because I know that I'm going to need to have several of those as we start working on the rectangular platform. So, so the next uh, part is we're going to go ahead and use the um, cylindrical mate to go ahead and place that into one of the holes. Okay. That looks like a fairly good fix. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and close that up. And we're going to go ahead and paste in the other three main poles that we're going to need. Okay. So with those in place, we go ahead and go back to the cylindrical mate, try and grab towards the top, place it as needed. and close that up. Now we should see some things kind of moving around. Um, we do notice that the poles are still going ahead and popping up and down except for, um, well actually all of them. So let's go ahead and grab the planer tool, repeat kind of the same process, solve, make sure it fits, repeat the process a few times, Solve to make sure that it fits, and good to go. Okay. Now, just because we know that we've got some of this that's um, sliding around, what I'm going to do is, rather than just using the uh, the mate plane, um, let's go ahead and use some of the. Let's see if we can use the origin points. Maybe not the way that I was hoping to. Um, So we'll go ahead and just kind of leave that kind of as it is. Hopefully everything else will go ahead and um, mesh up for the way that we want them to. Okay, um, keeping things parallel, keeping them, you know, even though they may be rotating around. Actually, that's simply just fix. Okay, that way 
we've lost the ability okay we've locked down enough enough of the other um, degrees of freedom that we're okay to go ahead and continue so the next part is we need to kind of do the same thing on the uh, rectangular piece um, let's see actually I don't like that let's see Let's unfix that. Let's fix the uh, triangular since we haven't actually moved that. And then we can go ahead and set a set a parallel mate. Let's see if that works. Uh, to go ahead and just lock it in place. So now, yep, that goes ahead and squares that up. So I'm going to then go ahead and put in that second uh, fix, okay. unfix that platform, okay. And then we'll be able to go ahead and go back to our instructions and see about going ahead and putting it into the short sides of the triangular piece. So I'm going to go ahead close up our constraints for a moment go ahead and copy the short pull paste an extra one in we'll go ahead and do kind of the same process with the rectangular okay cylindrical mates rather okay. Um, even though they haven't necessarily been checked out. Oh, that's right. We've got to unfix that one. Okay. We still need to take care of some of the planar constraints. Let's see. Where's the problem in this one? Grabbing planar, grabbing the top circle, tell it to solve. That works. Okay. Same process. Solve, fix. Okay. Now, if needed, okay, even though those are constrained together, uh, we could go ahead and select all of them and group them. Uh, but I'm not too worried about going ahead and grouping them at this time. Okay. So the next big portion of this, according to the instructions, is we know that the long pole is going to have to go into the last triangular portion. And uh, a little hard to see, but basically the short pole on the back side is going to be placed straight on top of that pole. Okay. So. Let's go ahead and get back to our cylindrical mate. Get the top portion connected to the top portion. Let's see if that solves, should be good. Grab the planer, just make sure that they're getting locked in place as we need them to be. A little sluggish because delete that one try it again okay. <clears throat> okay there we go and then we can loosely place forgive it for being a little sluggish um, but we know that we can go ahead and apply kind of the same concept of our cylindrical mate uh, from the bottom of the back left portion of the triangular pad and place it in the same location okay now when we tell it to solve we'll see things kind of shift around okay that's not quite what we need so at this point we can go ahead and use kind of the same um, fasten mate hopefully to go ahead and take care of this so let's see if that constraint works 
change our view so we can see the appropriate get the appropriate tab okay. so I'd go ahead and use this to go ahead and create a version uh, another saving point um, we can put in descriptions uh, sometimes that's actually a good policy Um, and actually, I think that takes care of the platform subassembly. Uh, we can go ahead and double check and see if things rotate around. Um, but make sure we're getting back to our home view. Oh uh, yeah, we still have some rotation going on. Um, but hopefully it's a case where um, maybe we forgot to fix a couple of pieces. So we can go back a few steps okay, to where we know that we went ahead and got the uh, platform in place. And then we can go ahead and just lock a couple of more. Okay? Generally, I don't like using the, uh, the fixed constraints, but since we don't necessarily have a good way of uh, locking it down to the origin, uh, we'll just go ahead and accept it for as it is. Okay. Um, so again, always kind of be click and dragging, checking to see if it's working, uh, and uh, that basically sets us up for the final assembly.